One, two, three, four, five, six. This is enough for you. Six photo ideas, which are quite challenging to test your skill. And don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly how they are done. The best part about it is that you don't have to go anywhere. They are all done indoors. You can try them in your home by yourself or with your family. Six photo ideas to try at home. If we don't know each other yet, ahoy, my name is Zdeň Karela. If you want to learn how to take better photos and videos with the latest gear, consider subscribing. Normally I would announce the best submissions from the last round right now, but let's do it a little bit later right after photo idea number one. I am sure you have at home cutlery or any other shiny, or it doesn't even have to be a shiny object, but just interesting object when it comes to shape. On a very sunny day, find an area which is getting quite a lot of sun through the window. For background, I used white board. You can use white hard paper on any other white paper. Then I grabbed three forks and placed them so they create shadow. I took the photo with my mirrorless camera and just kit lens, 15 to 45 millimeters. I had it at 15 millimeters so I could get close and play with different angles. When the sun is hitting from the right, you want to place yourself on the left to actually see the shadow very well. If you are gonna be straight up, you're not gonna see it, the big shadow. Don't shoot it from the top. Get as low as you possibly can. You want to set your ISO low. I had it on ISO 100 and I used lower aperture as I wanted the object sharp, but the rest softer. So I had it at f3.5 and my shutter speed was fairly fast. I didn't have to do much editing in a Lightroom. I literally, all I had to do is to make the contrast a little bit stronger and bring some highlights down a little bit and then just convert some photos to black and white. I am sure you have at home some kind of a mirror. It doesn't have to be a big one, it can be a smaller one as well. Or maybe you have a plexiglass and you have a black paper for the background, or you have a black cloth which can work as a background, and flashlight. For the first photo, I used plexiglass with a black background and just place a camera as my object. I used two lights to see what I can get. The first one, is the Falcon Eyes F7 light, which can also change colors. And then the second one is just my flashlight. There is a little trick when you're lighting the object. If you just lit the whole thing, you're not going to see the reflection. If you will lit only the object, but make sure that the light is not going on the plexiglass, you will see the reflection. It works actually very well with flashlight. And for the second shot, I just used a mirror but I had to be quite careful so I'm not seeing the edges because the mirror is not very big. I simply had to zoom in quite a bit and I had to position the camera from the top. I use here flashlight again to light up only the areas I wanted. And you could try any lens for this shot. I had the same kit lens, 15 to 45 millimeters, just zoomed in quite a bit. What I was mainly playing with, and that is something you should try to play with, is aperture. So you can shoot in aperture priority mode or manual mode. On this shot, I wanted only part of the rings to be sharp, so I left it at f3.5. And here I wanted all of them to be sharp, so I cranked it up a bit. So how did I edit the photos? Well, a little bit more contrast and play it with the colors. For the jewelry, the same thing. I made those colors pop. Well, now is the time to announce the first group of finalists from the last Creative Camera Challenge round before we move on to photo idea number three. In the last round, you were supposed to submit meaningful images to you, regardless of the quality. The images had to tell a strong story behind them. First photo is from Henri, and as he says, this photo was taken Sunday at mom's nursing home. My brother is trying to get our mom to recognize him. Title of this picture is, I will always love you, mom. 
Second photo is from BJ and the author says, story behind this is, I'm fascinated by light. I'm what is considered legally blind and totally colorblind. So things like this catch my attention. This is a night shot of dandelions taken with Pixel 3 XL. Photo number three is from Rolf. This photo was taken on July 14th, 2002 in Russia in an old Volga 1971 model. I love the vibes and sensuality the pics gives me. 26 days later, we got married and a year and a half later, she moved from Russia to Norway. She still looks at me the same way as when the picture was taken. It warms my heart. Photo idea number three is quite trendy. It is quite popular right now on social media. I actually seen something similar the other day on Instagram. So what I did here, I built a frame to shoot through and that frame was actually visible in the image and it had to do something with the main object of the photo. I grabbed a small table and placed books in sort of a circle, left a hole in the middle to reveal an object. My model is sitting by the table studying. I use light to lit up the books as it would be way too dark otherwise. I also tried to use color lights as well to create different looks. It is all about composition and framing, moving the books around so you have interesting shot. You don't have to use only books. How about Lego pieces as a frame and your object could be child playing or actual Lego model or food ingredients and dish with the final food as object. When you take photos of kids, don't try to post them or ask them for smile. Otherwise you're gonna end up with that smile number three. Instead of that, just make them play on their own. Let them be in their element and just kind of watch what they are doing and take photos here and there. Sometimes you can even ask a question and you can say something nice in regards to what they are doing. And then you get lucky when they will look at you in that more natural way. So when you look at the photos down the road in the future, this is what you're gonna see, how they were really behaving when they were little. And those moments are very precious. Wider lens is better for this to see the foreground and the background. I focused on the model, so I got soft frame, the books. I kept lower aperture to have only the center sharp. When it comes to photo editing or shot like this, you can be very creative here. You can change the colors, make it black and white, brighten certain areas, add flare, anything goes. You can add contrast and make the right crop for the photo to stand out. This photo idea number four is a little bit spooky. I know that we've done double exposure creative camera challenge in past and I will link it in the video description below for those interested because that video will tell you exactly how to do it with your smartphone or DSLR or in Photoshop in post. This double exposure is a little bit different. Instead of just face or object or body part, I try to go with mood. To me, it looks like a ghost. This is just the way I see it. And you can do all kinds of expressions. You can show frustration, having yourself or family member act as a model, and then you overlay those two photos or show anger, happiness, hope, or try this ghost image. I don't have the right wardrobe for it because nothing fits anymore, but I'm trying to change that. <laughs> what I think would work the best is that kind of beige nightgown, standing somewhere by the bed, holding with a teddy bear. That could look kind of like a ghost. Or you can have a guy sitting by the table, completely drunk, kind of laying on the table, empty bottle there, and then the second image of him standing, staring straight at the camera. That could work. You can do so many things, just, just don't make it too morbid. <laughs> Photos were taken in natural light on a tripod. I used my smartphone as a remote. You can totally use timer as well. Make sure you don't move the tripod or camera between the shots so you can layer the images. Only change the body positions. And you can try any lens. You don't have to be really picky too much with the settings. The final photo is created in Photoshop and it is quite easy to do. Just layer those two images on top of each other and use screen as a blending option. 
Then you can still adjust the images individually to get the final look. I adjusted brightness and color a bit. And now here is the second group of finalists from the last Creative Camera Challenge. First photo is from Pia. This was taken in Uganda. I was visiting the work or Ministry of Vision for Africa. It showed me how privileged we are. We can just turn on the tap and out comes drinking water. There in Uganda, they sometimes have to go long ways to get some water. Even the children help and carry the heavy water canisters. So that showed me to be more thankful for the things we often take for granted. Second photo is from Jane. I know the quality is not great. It is actually a still from when I was making a video with my dog, Sammy. I do not have biological children, so she's very special to me. I swear she was smiling back here. Just a special look captured that I will cherish forever. Taken with Canon M50 on video setting. This is quite interesting. I actually had a very similar dog in past. It was a male doe and his name was Sammy as well. Here's the photo. Third photo is from Frank. In 1982, I got my first film SLR, a Pentax K1000 and shot quite a bit of black and white film and did my own film processing and printing. Here is a photo I took at a local hockey game with a bit of a story to it. It's a bit sketchy in terms of quality, but it portrays the confrontation between a player and the referees. Two more photo ideas follow. Here's a photo idea number five, which is a humor, multiply yourself. And this one is so much fun. You can completely go crazy with your family and it's very easy to do. I did this as a selfie. So again, I used my smartphone as a remote. Pick a room with even light, which doesn't change. Grab a wide lens so you can fit the whole room in it. Just place the camera on a tripod. Don't touch it between the shots so you don't change the view. Use higher aperture like f5.6 or even higher to have most of the image sharp and pose away. Cool poses, funny props. Adults behave though. Once you're done, upload the photos to Photoshop and simply place new layer and erase everything around but the person and add another layer and erase everything but the person and so on and so on. Keep going. Flatten the photo at the end, edit further and done. This is a fun thing to do with kids, especially kids. They love it. You can do this one a few different ways. What I chose to do is select burst mode on my camera and also made sure I had selected very fast shutter speed. The burst mode took series of photos as my model was throwing the cards. And then I saved the photos I needed from the whole burst series and layered them just like I did at the multiply yourself idea in Photoshop. You can just have one object flying in the photo. It doesn't have to be continuous like I did. As I was running out of the light, my photo turned out very grainy. It shouldn't be like that. So just make sure you shoot it in the middle of the day when the light is very bright. Possibly the best would be to shoot it when it's actually sunny outside and you are in a room which has large windows or one big window where there's a lot of light coming through. And you can be throwing anything. Just make sure it is soft, not sharp. And I know that we've been spending a lot of time in the same house or apartment for a number of days and it's probably gonna be like that for a while. And this might be a good time for you to relieve some anger. No, please stay away from knives. Last group of the finalists from the last submission is here. First photo is from Chris. To me, this one, this photo tells a story. It is a story of love, devotion, sacrifice, trust or respect earned and given. It's the last photo I took of my father about an hour after we had been given the news he had terminal lung cancer. To get some head time, we went for a short walk along and discussed Kennel Towpath, where we sat and shared a coffee from a flask. It was the last walk we had. Rest in peace, Dad. Second photo is from Rajkumar. This photo was taken September 6, 2015 with my Sony H HX400V. This was a reunion meet of my 1982 school friends. 
Believe me, it happened after 33 years, all were from different walks of life and settled of different parts of South India. The main purpose of the reunion meet is to bring the nostalgic moments and lost friends together. The last photo is from Russell. This wooden box was made by my dad. He did so about 20 years ago. I will always remember that he is much more creative than I ever thought growing up. I'll treasure it as long as I can and pass it on to his grandchildren when this time comes. Thank you very much for participating. All photographers are credited below the video in the video description. Well, you've seen six photo ideas you can try to shoot in your homes. You can even try to submit them for a chance to be featured in the next round of camera challenge. And the deadline for this one is April 27th, 2020. You can upload the photos to ZD Camera Challenge Facebook group. The link is in the video description below, or you can also upload them to your Instagram account and use hashtag ZDChallenge13. Hit the thumbs up if you liked today's video and subscribe to more. If you have any questions, comments, or simply want to say hi or ahoy, you can do so in a comment section below. And I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ahoy.